This video will show how to assemble the extruder unit. Check the manual for the correct parts to use. We start by attaching these printed parts. Note you must insert a nut beforehand. Be sure you have placed the nut in the correct direction before continuing. The printed parts are then screwed on and don't forget the washers before applying the nuts. You can use the spool holder to tighten the nuts. Once you've done this, apply bolts to the printed cogs. Again, these have a predefined direction. The bolt heads must fit into the hexagon shaped recesses on the cog. Next, screw the bolts with the cogs into the nuts you placed in the printed parts earlier on. There's no need to use tools, you can do it with your fingers. Screw in until the tip of the bolt thread appears, as you see here. For our next task, we'll be pre-assembling some components as you can see here. Screw in the bolt by hand, then tighten it well with the spool holder. Repeat with the other pieces. Now we'll fasten them to the previous piece. Be very mindful of the orientation and consult the manual to be completely sure about it. Screw it on as shown and take note that this time you don't need a washer. A correct end result corresponds to the pieces swiveling freely. The following step is to clamp in some linear bearings. This is identical to when we clamped in the linear bearings to the table structure before. You just have to be sure the orientation is always correct. Remember that, as with any piece, sometimes you may need to file off some paint if the pieces aren't fitting properly. Don't forget that you mustn't tighten the clamps too tightly. Don't screw one nut onto a clamp all at once. Screw each one on bit by bit in order to distribute the force you're applying to the bearing. Remember, tighten up to the point when the bearing stops rotating. The next step is to mount the two stepper motors that will feed the extruders with printing material. On the end of each motor's cable, there is a label. On each label, you, the user, will use the marker to choose which motor is the zero motor and which is the one motor. Use markings that will be unmistakable, as this is crucial for the dual extruder to work properly. Mounting the motors is pretty straightforward, but there are some details you have to pay attention to. Make sure the cable coming out of each motor is facing inwards and be certain that you place the zero motor and the one motor in the correct order, which is as you see here. The zero is on the left, the one on the right. And finally notice that each motor is held in place by a single screw in the specific hole you see here. Remember to fasten tightly, but not too tightly, so as not to damage the motor's aluminium thread. And now we assemble these very important extruder components. Note that every component here has either been branded with a 0 or a 1, or has a label that the user must mark. Each of these must match up to the corresponding stepper motor. When joining the hot end and the heatsink, Notice that the sides branded with a number face the same way. They mustn't end up like the way illustrated here. Now we're going to lock these pieces into place using socket set screws. Screw in tight but not too tight. The channel between the two parts is fragile so they mustn't twist once the socket set screw is done up. Next it's the temperature sensors. Unravel them and very importantly, mark on the labels whether they are to be connected to the zero extruder or one extruder. You now place each sensor inside the hot end. Notice how the size of each orifice matches the size of the sensor end. 
Hold each sensor in place with a socket set screw, but be very careful not to tighten too hard. With this done, we move on to the extruder fans. For now, we need two, and again, we clearly mark the labels of each, one with a zero, the other with a one. We remind you, all the components marked with a zero go together, and all with a one go together. Don't get them mixed up. Take your time with the wiring, as it can easily get tangled and you mustn't mix them up. So match up the fan labelled zero to the extruder hot end and heatsink labelled zero, and needless to say, do the same for the things with one on them. Now, take note of how the extruder end is oriented. See that the side branded with a number is facing up, and notice which way the wiring is facing. Notice how the fan we see here has the label facing down. Also see how the wiring is oriented. Thread some screws. Place the assembled set onto the mounting as shown and tighten the screws. A very important point we must stress right away is to never rest the extruder upon either one of the brass nozzles. Now see how the wiring will pass through the plate. Do it slowly and calmly. Don't snag the wire or bend it too tightly. Now repeat the same for the other extruder end and respective wiring. With this one, you might find it better to thread the wiring through the metal plate before screwing in the fan and the extruder end. We now attach the blower. Once again, careful not to rest the units on top of the brass extruder nozzles. As before, you will be marking the label on each blower fan wiring. Write on B for blower on both labels as well. The printed parts don't need to be labelled, but may need some strands shaved off. Fit the blower fan unit into the printed blower channel. Note that the side without the label is left visible, and see here which way the wiring must go. The fans simply click into place without the need for screws. Once you've done this, screw it onto the assembled set. Don't tighten too hard so as not to damage the printed blower housing. And careful not to rest the assembled unit on top of the nozzles. Repeat the previous steps for the other blower, remembering to label the blower fan wiring. Thread the wiring through the same place the extruder fan wiring went through. And again, do it carefully to not damage any wires. The last step is to click this printed part into position. Don't forget to place it facing the correct way. And there, the dual extruder unit is ready.